If you're not tracking your startup metrics on a daily basis, you might be closer to failure than you even realize. Just because things seem to be going well doesn't mean that they actually are. You might very easily lie to yourself and your partners might lie to you too, but the numbers, the numbers never lie. But there are a thousand factors that you could be tracking, so which ones are actually important? Well, the ones that really matter to startups are the same ones that matter to pirates, and they're called pirate metrics. Wait, 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 don't click off just yet, because I'm not joking. If you've ever heard a pirate say, R, matey, then you've already got the formula to startup metrics. R, or A-A-R-R-R, which stands for acquisition, activation, retention, referral, and revenue. That's how you keep from having to walk the plank both on a pirate ship and in your business. So grab an eye patch, a wooden peg, and a cursing parrot, and come aboard the ship, because we're about to deep dive into the world of pirate metrics. Let's get it. Hey guys, I'm Mike Sims from Think Lions, and on this episode of Startup Squared, we will discuss the ins and outs of pirate metrics and how they can impact your business. When it comes to launching and growing your startup, let's get one thing clear. Metrics matter. It matters how many people are seeing your marketing message, how many are converting into leads, how many turn into customers, how long they stick around, how many people they tell about your business, and how much they spend over their customer lifetimes. When you are keen on where you stand according to your key performance indicators or your KPIs, it makes it much easier to plan your next steps. Steps that will allow you to identify where your business's strengths lie, optimize any weaknesses, and generate more revenue into your business. Pirate Metrics create a funnel for tracking the behavior of users from the time they learn about your business until they become long-term and loyal customers, with attention paid to every step from acquisition to referral. If you can optimize each metric properly, then you can create a synergy between your marketing, sales, and customer support efforts and create a machine that brings customers in, creates widespread satisfaction, and maximizes revenue. In this video, we'll describe everything you need to know about acquisition, activation, retention, referral, and revenue metrics, and I'll tell you how to take advantage of these metrics to grow your business. But before we get into the good stuff, if you're looking for tips and tutorials to grow your business exponentially, like this video, hit the subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our uploads. All right, matey, let's get to it, starting with the first of the pirate metrics, acquisition. When you're measuring and assessing acquisition metrics, you're really seeking to answer one question. How do users become aware of our business? The acquisition stage is the one where your brand becomes visible to the customer and they get the chance to learn about and get to know your brand and this product. At this point, it's your job as the founder or your CMO's job to create multiple touch points that allow customers to learn about your brand's mission, the value of your offerings, and the ways in which your products or services solve the problems that they are facing. Let's look at it in a different way that anyone can understand. If we were talking about romantic relationships instead of startups, this would be like starting a profile on Tinder or Bumble, promoting yourself to potential matches, going on a first date, buying flowers, meeting the parents, and doing all the other things necessary to make that person fall in love with you. There are several channels that you can use to reach customers, showcase your marketing message, introduce your brand, and inspire them to go deeper into the sales funnel. Some of these channels include search engine optimization, search engine marketing, social media, public relations, content marketing, video marketing, or even more traditional marketing methods like television and radio, billboards, and magazine advertising. Now this video isn't so much about marketing channels as it is about the metrics that are associated with them, but if you wanna learn more about different marketing channels, I'll leave a link to another video right up here somewhere that'll provide you with a ton more detail. So you've got your channel set up and you're driving some traffic to your website or generating some new leads, so what should you really track? Well, it really depends on your specific business, but some of the most important metrics include website visits, lead conversion rates, number of contacts and leads generated, social engagement rates, email reply rates, deal cycles, and customer acquisition costs. These metrics detail how healthy your marketing strategy is, whether it's effectively converting prospects into leads, whether you've chosen the right channels, and whether your efforts are optimized enough to bring clients in at a low enough cost that it leaves the business with significant profit. But acquiring a customer means nothing if you can't get them to move forward with the purchase and that's why it's super important to also understand the next stage of pirate metrics activation Dave McClure, the first person to ever introduce pirate metrics, defined acquisition metrics as metrics that can answer the question, how quickly do customers reach the aha moment? Activation is the point at which customers have their first interaction and experience with your startup's product. 
The aha moment refers to the moment of sudden realization, inspiration, insight, recognition, or comprehension. In business, it's the point that the customer realizes that your product or service is exactly what they need to solve whatever problem they're experiencing. Getting a user to use your product is a great achievement, but what you really want is for your users to love your product and decide to use it over and over again. You can drive a million downloads to your app, but if every user only opens the application one time and never returns, then your startup will fail. Instead, you want them to see the value in your product quickly and keep coming back to use it and eventually become a loyal customer. You might seek to activate a SaaS customer by offering a free trial, allowing them to get a hands-on experience with the product. A car dealership, on the other hand, activates a customer by getting them behind the wheel, with some offering a test drive and others allowing customers to take the car home for a whole week so they can experience owning and driving the car firsthand. In this stage, you're measuring the number and percentage of visitors that take a specified action, whether that's filling out a lead form, signing up for a newsletter, requesting a consultation, downloading a free trial, or requesting a demo. For social media networks like Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, early activation was complete when a new user invited several of their friends to join the network. Once their friends were on board, the likelihood of that individual using the platform frequently multiplied since they'd want to sign in and talk to their friends. For that reason, social media sites always encourage new users to send out an email to their peers that are not currently using the platform. Depending upon which tactics you are using to activate customers, you can track one of several metrics. This may be the visitor to lead conversion rate or the percentage of visitors that download a free trial, for instance. For a social media media site, it could be the percentage of new users who refer a specific number of their peers to the site. For a business like Dropbox, it could be the number of new users who upload their first file, as they know that once someone uploads one file, it's much more likely that they'll continue uploading more. When selecting your metrics, you want to track how many people engage with the product in some way and then become a loyal user of the product. At this point, you're acquiring customers and tracking their metrics and then activating them and ensuring that they're excited about the product and its benefits. But they aren't locked in just yet because now you have to track retention metrics to make sure that they stick around for the long term. Retention metrics are all about finding out how many customers stick around and why others churn. The goal is to make sure that every user becomes sticky. Customer stickiness is the propensity of customers to come back to your product or use it frequently and consistently. This is especially important to startups since acquiring a new customer can cost five times more than retaining an existing one. Furthermore, research shows that increasing customer retention by 5% can increase profits anywhere from 25% to 95%. By retaining customers, businesses can maximize their customer lifetime value and stabilize revenues over the long term. So what does retention look like for different types of businesses? For a social media site, stickiness would be how many times a user signs into their account on their phones or computers each day or each week. For a SaaS business, it would be how many users make additional payments for continued service. So how do you retain customers? Well, you do so by providing immense value to every customer and ensuring that the solution truly addresses their specific problems, their needs, and their demands. If you do this sufficiently and better, faster, or cheaper than competitors, then users will stick around. Some of the activities you may engage in to increase customer retention include things like email nurturing and retargeting. But when you're measuring retention, some of the metrics you should focus on are things like customer lifetime value, which is the value of each customer over their entire engagement with the brand, churn rates, which is the annual percentage rate at which customers stop subscribing to a service, and net promoter score, or the likelihood that a user will recommend a company, a product or service to a friend or an associate. Customer acquisition is expensive, but once you acquire them, your margins will expand significantly on each additional payment with very little cost. The longer you retain a customer, the more revenue you will generate. And when you start earning revenue, you'll need to collect and evaluate revenue metrics as well. Depending on which pirate metrics funnel you look at, some may have revenue as the second to the last step or as the last step. I like to think that the perfect place to put it is the second before the last, as you have to be able to acquire, obtain, generate income from, and retain customers before you could truly expect them to refer you to someone else. When you're tracking revenue metrics, the question that you're hoping to answer is, how many visitors become paying customers and how much are they willing to pay? 
If you've optimized every area of your company based on the previous metrics that we mentioned and exceeded your targets in those areas, revenue should be flowing into the business. At least that is if you have an attractive business model and a profitable monetization strategy in place. Some businesses go years before they finally figure out how they will monetize their companies. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and several other social media sites have launched without a revenue model surviving solely off investor money. And while they were able to create popular advertising networks to begin generating revenue, this is not the route that you want to take. Instead, you want to ensure that your business can generate revenue early on and you want to use revenue metrics to validate it. When it comes to attracting investors, all metrics matter, but revenue is the metric that will close the deal quicker than any other. Revenue is the most important metric and luckily for you, it's also the easiest one to track. You can look at it from the big picture side and track every dollar that comes in, keeping a close eye on monthly recurring and annual recurring revenue, but there are several other metrics that you could track too, like average transaction revenue, customer lifetime value, and the conversion rate of individuals upgrading from free to paid accounts or from basic to premium accounts. As you evaluate revenue metrics, you'll be able to see where things are strong and where they are lacking. For instance, if you find that average transaction value is low, you can consider other ways of upselling your customers. Or if you find that very few free accounts are upgrading their premium accounts, then you can consider a new approach or a new strategy strategy like offering a discount for signing up, which will increase the conversion rate. If you've done all this correctly, you will have acquired, activated, retained, and earned revenue from your customers. They've reached the aha moment and they are fully loyal to your brand. Now you want them to start referring your products to their peers, but to ensure that they are doing that, you need to collect and assess referral metrics. Referral metrics help you answer the question, how likely is it that an existing customer will refer someone else to your business? Referrals are essential to a business. And just like we mentioned in the retention metrics portion of the video, customer acquisition through most channels can be extremely expensive. In some industries like finance or business services, acquiring a single customer could cost hundreds or thousands of dollars. But how much does it cost when a customer refers a friend or an associate to a business? Nothing, nada. Zero. Furthermore, your customers have more power to sell than your brand does. Statistically, 91% of consumers trust referrals from people that they know, and 77% of consumers are more likely to buy a new product when learning about it from family or friends. Referral metrics are one of the most difficult to track, since it can be challenging to know exactly when someone refers a product to someone else. However, there are several methods that a business can use to collect referral metrics, such as customer referral links, platform emails, social shares, and referral fields and sign-up forms. What kind of metrics can you collect to evaluate referral? Well, some of the most common ones are social shares, ratings and reviews, and customer satisfaction rates. Satisfied customers are more likely to refer products and their reviews are powerful in helping prospective customers make a purchase decision. If you can improve the number of social shares, ratings, reviews, and direct referrals from your customers, you'll be able to consistently generate new interest in your business without the expensive acquisition costs that are often associated with other marketing and promotional channels. And that's it. Those are the five groups of metrics that you should be tracking in your startup. If you wanna to get to the treasure, then think like a pirate. Make sure that you have a great metric funnel in place so that you can assess every touch point with your customers. This will allow you to maximize your strengths, strengthen your weaknesses, and optimize every step across the customer journey. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.